There are some moments in life that are never forgotten. It can be anything. A favorite toy from childhood, a time of shared laughter, the pain of lost love, the scent of a flower, sunlight on a distant mountaintop, the platform of a small railway station in northern India in the soft, quiet light of early morning. When I was at college, I used to spend my summer holidays at Dera, at my grandmother's place. I stayed there in the hills from early May until late in July. Dioli was a small station about 30 miles from Dera. It marked the beginning of the heavy jungles of the Indian Terai area. The train used to reach Dioli at about five in the morning when the station was poorly lit with oil lamps and the jungle across the railway line was just visible in the early light of day. Dioli only had one platform, a waiting room and an office for the station master. On the platform, there was a tea stall, a fruit cellar, and a few thin, hungry dogs. Not much else, because the train stopped there for only ten minutes before rushing on into the forests. Why it stopped at Dioli, I don't know. Nothing ever happened there. Nobody got off the train, and nobody got on but the train always stopped there a full ten minutes. And then a bell sounded, the guard blew his whistle, and soon Dioli was left behind and forgotten. I used to wonder what happened in Dioli, behind the station walls. I always felt sorry for that lonely little platform and for the place that nobody wanted to visit. I decided that one day I would get off the train at Dioli and spend the day there, just to please the town. I was 18, visiting my grandmother, and the night train stopped at Dioli. A girl came down the platform, selling baskets. It was a cold morning, and the girl had a shawl thrown across her shoulders, her feet were bare and her clothes were old, but she was a young girl, walking like a queen. When she came to my window, she stopped. She saw that I was staring at her, but at first she pretended not to notice. She had a pale skin, shiny black hair and dark, troubled eyes. And then those eyes searching and expressive, met mine. She stood by my window for some time, and neither of us said anything. But when she moved on, I found myself leaving my seat and going to the door. I stepped out and stood waiting on the platform, looking the other way, away from her. I walked across to the tea stall, Water was boiling over a small fire, but the owner of the stall was busy serving tea somewhere on the train. The girl followed me to the stall. Do you want to buy a basket? she asked. They are very strong, made of the finest... No, I said. I don't want a basket. We stood looking at each other for what seemed a very long time, and finally she said, Are you sure you don't want a basket? All right, give me one, I said, and I took the one on top and gave her a rupee. I didn't dare to touch her fingers. As she was about to speak, the guard blew his whistle. She said something but it was lost in the ringing of the bell and the noise of the engine. I had to run back to my compartment. The train moved forward. I watched her as the platform slipped away. 
She was alone on the platform, and she did not move, but she was looking at me and smiling. I watched her until the signal box got in the way, and then the jungle hid the station, but I could still see her standing there alone. I sat up awake for the rest of the journey. I could not get out of my mind the picture of the girl's face and her dark, burning eyes. But when I reached Dera, I soon forgot about the meeting because there were other things to think about. It was only when I was making the return journey, two months later, that I remembered the girl. I was looking out for her as the train entered the station, and I was surprised how excited I felt when I saw her walking up the platform. I jumped out and waved to her. When she saw me, she smiled. She was pleased that I remembered her. I was pleased that she remembered me. We were both pleased, and it was almost like a meeting of old friends. She did not go all the way down the train selling baskets, but came straight to the tea stall. Her dark eyes were suddenly filled with light. We said nothing for some time, but we each knew what the other was feeling. I wanted to put her on the train there and then, and take her away with me. I hated the idea of having to watch her disappear into the distance of Dioli station. I took the baskets from her hand and put them down on the ground. She put out her hand for one of them, but I caught her hand and held it. I have to go to Delhi, I said. She nodded. I do not have to go anywhere. The guard blew his whistle for the train to leave. How I hated him for doing that. I will come again, I said. Will you be here? She nodded again, and as she nodded, the bell rang and the train started to move. I had to pull my hand away from the girl and run for the moving train. This time I did not forget her. She was with me for the rest of the journey and for long afterwards. All that year she was a bright, living thing in my mind. And when college finished, I packed and left for Dera earlier than usual. My grandmother would be pleased at my eagerness to see her. I was anxious as the train entered Dioli because I was wondering what I should say to the girl and what I should do. I was determined not to stand helplessly in front of her, unable to speak or express my feelings. The train came to Dioli, and I looked up and down the platform, but I could not see the girl anywhere. I opened the door and stepped onto the platform, deeply disappointed and fearing the worst. I ran up to the station master and said, do you know the girl who used to sell baskets here? No, I don't, he replied. And you'd better get on the train if you don't want to be left behind. But I walked up and down the platform and stared past the station buildings. All I saw was a tree and a dusty road leading into the jungle. Where did the road go? The train was moving out of the station, and I had to run up the platform and jump for the door of my compartment. Then, as the train gathered speed, I sat miserably in front of the window. What could I do about finding a girl I had seen only twice, who had said very little to me, and about whom I knew nothing, absolutely nothing? but for whom I felt a fondness and responsibility that I had never felt before. My grandmother was not pleased with my visit after all, because I only stayed at her place for a couple of weeks. Feeling restless and worried, I took the train back 
intending to ask further questions of the station master at Dioli. But at Dioli there was a new station master. The previous man had been moved to another station, and the new man didn't know anything about the girl who sold baskets. I found the owner of the tea stall and asked him if he knew anything about the girl with the baskets. Yes, there was such a girl here, I remember quite well, he said. But she has stopped coming now. Why, I asked. What happened to her? How should I know, he said. She was nothing to me. And once again, I had to run for the train. As Dioli platform slid away, I decided that one day I would have to break my journey there, spend a day in the town, make inquiries, and find the girl who had stolen my heart with nothing but a look from her dark, impatient eyes. I cheered myself up with this thought during my last few months in college. I went to Dera again in the summer, and when, in the early hours of the morning, the night train came into Dioli station, I looked up and down the platform for signs of the girl, knowing I wouldn't find her, but hoping just the same. Somehow, I couldn't bring myself to break my journey at Dioli and spend a day there. If this was a film, I thought, I'd get off the train, solve the mystery, and provide a suitable ending for the whole thing. I think I was afraid to do this. I was afraid of discovering what had really happened to the girl. Perhaps she was no longer in Dioli. Perhaps she was married. Perhaps she had fallen ill. In the last few years, I have passed through Dioli many times, and I always look out of the train window, half expecting to see the same unchanged face smiling up at me. I wonder what happens in Dioli, behind the station walls. But I will never break my journey there. I prefer to keep hoping and dreaming and looking out of the window up and down that lonely platform, waiting for the girl with the baskets. I never break my journey at Dioli, but I pass through as often as I can. <laughs>